In this video, I'm going to be going over part four of our What Makes a Great Offensive Scheme in Madden series, where we're basically just breaking down how do you build an offense from scratch? How do you build a defense from scratch, right? And we've talked a little bit about some of the previous components. Today, we're going to be talking about the three-headed rushing attack, what that is, how you can do that in almost any almost any formation in the game. Now, if you're watching this video and you want to get better at Madden, make sure to join my Patreon. It's only $10 to become a member. It's going to get you access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. We've taken a lot of the work out of the game for you and kind of just given you the best of the best schemes over there. So if you want to become a member, it's only $10 to sign up. The link is in the description. We've got over 22 offensive and defensive ebooks. So we're dropping a brand new ebook this week. So make sure that you get in the Patreon if you have not already. And we're going to be talking today specifically about a three-headed rushing attack. Now, we've been talking in our offensive series about what makes a great offense in Madden. What are the five key things that you need in your offense? The first thing you have to have um, is you have to have a power play. Now, we've been doing this series out of normal Y off close. You can apply these principles to any formation, any offense in the game that you want to create. Okay, You have to have a dominant power play. You have to have something in your playbook that is your bread and butter play. I, play that can beat man coverage zone coverage match coverage the blitz all in one clip and it has to be able in my personal opinion it has to be able to be ran about 60 to 80 percent of the time so if you only had to run one play 60 to 80 percent of the game what is that play for you and it can change for a player to player right pros run the bunch formation significantly differently from one another um, but they always have a bread and butter play so what is that for you and we talked about that in the normal why off close our power play is going to be the Y sale because this corner route is really effective that fade is actually pretty glitchy against zone you have a backside dig that's really good and then we can basically turn this into a really really good and high percentage play now the next question is what is your counter play so the area of the field that your power play attacks ideally you want your counterplay to attack a different area of the field so we talked a little bit about mesh spot and how we can kind of hot route this play a little bit especially with slot apprentice to turn this into a really really good concept against man and zone coverage that is going to be able to work that left side of the of the screen as well as have a kind of a running back quick throw the third piece and the third key for an offense you have to have what i call constraint theory plays now these plays you can have you know five or six of these plays in your playbook you could have one of these plays in your playbook but what i think makes a great constraint theory play is constraint theory plays ensure that you're living in a perfect world so if your opponent is always running is over committing their defense in one way or the other or if they're always running man or if they're always running zone or if they're always running match right then you can go to your match bomb you can go to your zone beater you could go to your man beater your blitz beater right um you can go to your quick snap money plays that's what a constraint theory play is. It changes the pace of your offense. It changes how your offense attacks. It kind of forces the hand of the defense to switch up what they're doing. And that's the whole purpose of a constraint theory play. We talked yesterday about how good the play escape is out of this as a constraint theory play because it the, cor the route to the tight end goes a little shorter than the corner route. The corner route comes to the left side from the slot receiver. You got a deep post over the middle of the field. All those things factor in. And then today we're talking about a three-headed rushing attack. Now, really, this formation only has um, a couple of different runs, but I did want to talk about two specific runs. The first one is inside zone, and then the second one is RPO zone alert Omaha. Now, the reason these are really good is because they attack the whole field. A three-headed rushing attack is essentially, if you boil it down and whittle it down to like the, the variable here, we're looking for a play or we're looking for an offense where we can run the ball to the left we can run the ball to the middle, and we can run the ball to the right, hence the term three-headed rushing attack. So what we're looking to do with this inside zone is we're looking, can we run this inside zone over the middle of the field? You see right here, if I cut the, the play up, then I can then attack the middle of the field. So like, let's say they're coming out a dollar, and they're giving me a good look, a good look to run this. I can run this inside zone inside, right? I can run the ball in the middle of the field. But I can also run this inside zone 
as more of an outside run to the left side. As you see right there, it kind of can work as an off tackle run um, to the left side. And then the other thing that I can do with this is with the one cut system, I can cut this run to the right side. So the idea with this is let's say that they're over committing with their defense, which a lot of people do. Like, for example, the meta defense right now is this 3 3 double loop. Um, you know, so if they do something like this, you know, now, yes, the edges are going to be defended really well, but now the inside should be fairly open, as you can see right there. So we can, you know, hit our inside zone for a couple runs. And the beauty of inside zone, especially with the one cut system this year, is you can actually cut this in a lot of different directions. You can run it as a off guard run to the right, off guard run to the left. Now, the other component of this is this RPO. What you'll notice with this RPO is you can attach quick throws to this, which is really helpful. Let's say your opponent is running some cover four or whatever, and let's say that you know your little bubble screen could be an option. Now this bubble screen right here, a um, little bit different, but let's say for example, let me give you a little bit of a, a, an idea here what we can do with this. So let's say they give you a defensive look like this, and they're going to be sending pressure because they're trying to stop the run. So they do something like this. Okay, now your uh, bubble screen becomes a really good play for attacking the defense. Why? Because they're sending heavy pressure at us off of the edges. So these little quick, this quick bubble screen and this quick little um, out route to CD Lamb are really good against kind of some of the meta things. Now, really what you're looking at here, in my opinion, is if it's a man coverage look, like let's say they press up in man, this route to CD Lamb, a lot of times, you can just throw this out here against off man. Now, if they're pressing, probably not as good of an option as you can see there, but if they're if they're not pressing, then I can throw that out there to CD Lamb against man coverage and give myself a decent chance to be able to beat the man coverage that way. So the bottom line is, can you run the ball to the left, can you run the ball to the middle, and can you run the ball to the right? These are the things that make up a really dominant, in my opinion, rushing attack. And if you can do these things, you're going to get so much more bang for your buck out of your ground game. So you have to have the ability to run the ball to the left, to the middle, and to the right. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get more, get all my ebooks, all that stuff, hit that Patreon link that's going to flash on your screen right about now. That will get you access to everything. 10 bucks gets you access to all the ebooks and all of the updates as long as you're a member. So sign up for the Patreon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.